Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm Cornelia Stephanie, and I'm here today with my co-host, Charlene Hess. And we're here to talk today about meditation, one of the absolute necessities that we need in order to be able to um, navigate these spiritual waters that we find ourselves in. But before we go into that, I want to I just quickly say... You know, living heaven on earth is a daily practice. It's something that uh, we have to commit to, that we have to say yes to. And if we say yes to that, then we're able to uh, bring that into our reality. If it's something that's deeply wanted, desired from our heart, because that template is here, it exists. And peace on earth, heaven on earth begins with one soul, one heart at a time. One of my passions. And one of the things that I do is I help people step into their sovereignty. I help people step into their authority. And part of the reason why I do that is because that's what I've done for myself. I've done that for myself. And now I'm able to give that back. And when people step into their authority, their unique essence from deep inside of their soul is able to come out and then they're going to trust what that piece is, the piece that they're bringing to the world, which is why I'm so excited today about the topic that we're sharing here is because Charlene has discovered and cultivated a deeper intimacy and relationship with herself in meditation, something that I've really been trying to get her to do for years. <laughs> However, here we are. So it's it's so absolutely fantastic. And it's wonderful because this is now where she has found her authority. And when we find our authority in something, that's the part where we can give back to other people, where we can mm-hmm. really score and where we can really help. And but before we, before I bring Charlene on, because there's a couple of other things I want to share, and that is I want to read her bio because I, I want you all to hear exactly what it is that you're getting in working with her. So Charlene is a dynamic, passionate, transformational empowerment coach who is living her calling to empower people to fully connect with themselves physically, mentally, and emotionally. She enables them to live on purpose Mm -hmm. and find their joy and step into their highest calling. And through her self-discovery process, she helps people identify the limiting beliefs and the stories that are holding them back from living the life that they desire. Utilizing her skills as a hairdresser, as a personal trainer, and a life coach, she works with people to fully connect and integrate themselves from their appearance to their physical body and their mental and emotional health, bringing into alignment all aspects of their being. And the reason why she is doing that and the reason why that bio is so fantastic is because this is how Charlene lives her life. Mm -hmm. This is what it looks Mm -hmm. like for a person to be in their sovereignty and to really show up for yourself that way. And then we help other people with the thing that we discovered for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I bring you, it's an honor to bring you Charlene Hess, my co-host. Welcome to the show, Charlene. Thank you so much, Cornelia. Um, Wow, that's a great bio. (laughs) Who wrote that? Um, but you're right. I have, thank you for reading that because it um, it's really good to bring myself back to that place of remembering um, where I'm at. You know, we get caught up in our daily lives and we have, I know for me personally, I have so many things on my uh, to-do list because I am growing and expanding so rapidly that um, I, I'm so ahead of myself 
so often. And I know you know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about, Cornelia. So um, thank you. It is an honor to be here. I love, love, love doing these shows with you. Um, we've just got such great uh, dynamic energy together. And I love this topic. I'm so excited to share about this topic of meditation because like you uh, alluded to earlier, it has been such a struggle for me for so many years. I was in so much resistance and I've done the work and I, I fully understand why I was in resistance. I know what the stories that were going in the background and I know where I was in that, um, not ready to fully step into my wholeness. I was in that place where I would take a little bit of a step and be like, Whoa, this is great. I'm here knowing that there's even a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And I know even from where I'm at now, there's going to be so much more. So it is not a destination. It's an ongoing process. And so I'm really excited to talk about using meditation, um, to help you in this process. Yeah. So thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. And it's so wonderful. I, I, you know, when we were preparing for the show, cause we've got some show notes that go on email back and forth to each other. So we can have a structure and talk about things so we can bring things in a coherence for our listeners. I hope that people are on Facebook and, and watching us as we're putting ourselves out there into the <laughs> world, shining our lights, right? Because that's all part of being the authority in like, I'm the authority in, in, in what it is that I'm offering. And every person has their own discovery on what it is that their authority, what, what it, where their authority lies. And so part of what you're now coming forth with, this whole piece about meditation, and I love mm -hmm. later on in one of the segments, we're going to talk about uh, this really cool twist that you've got, that you came mm -hmm. up with, which I absolutely love. But mm -hmm. first, in the show notes, you had a declaration. Do yes. You, do you remember what it was? Um, it is that I, uh, I have a lot of declarations. And so the one that I'm thinking of is that I'm here to empower you to build such a deep, a deep understanding and connection with yourself so that you can become unstoppable and shining your light. Um, when you develop this deep self-connection, you begin to live on purpose. You begin to step into your calling and you begin to share your gift. And that's really how we change the world, you know, one person at a time. And so, you know, that is my declaration is that that is what I am here to do. That is what I know that I am the authority in, in that I have been given a gift to help people that I am able to see people in their highest. And so when I see somebody and they see themselves with this limitation, they see themselves because they're attached to the story that they showed up with. They're attached to the story that was given to them at birth, the way that they grew up, the parents that they had, the environment that they lived in. And when I see a person, I don't see that story. Just like you, when you look at me, you can hear the words that I say about my past story, but you always see me in my highest. And I have been given that same gift and that I'm able to see people in their highest. And I'm so passionate about helping them to see what I see. And I'm telling you, the secret is through meditation. <laughs> Getting quiet, you know, getting it, quiet. It, it is about getting quiet, but you know, you have so many gifts and part of this is part of the, this ongoing piece that I want to share with people is because you have been willing to really go deep because mm -hmm. that's part of your core is that you go deep and you don't stop, um, you know, on the surface, you dive deep, you go, <laughs> go really deep. And that's why sometimes it takes a while to get all the pieces because mm -hmm. you're, you're a deep sea diver, diving <laughs> deep into the emotional waters to uncover everything and make sure everything has been felt, everything has been looked at, everything has been understood. And then you bring that piece to your, to, to your world, to your clients, to your hairdresser, to your fitness, to all of the things that you do, your family, your influence, your community, you bring it everywhere you go. And um, just like today, when I was thinking about the show and, and so excited about being here with you, I thought, uh, I was going to ask you this. I was going to ask you, how do you love doing these shows? Oh, and I guess what? Great. Well, guess what? You answered me. You answered me. Uh, I was communicating with you. How do you love doing the shows? And you just answered me that you love this platform, that you love doing these shows because it really, it gives us a beautiful way, a structured way to share 
uh, communication, to share our light, to share our love with others in hopes that it will assist them to step into their calling, into their authority. And mm-hmm. so I want to right away let people know how they can get in contact with you, Charlene, because you're offering free 30-minute coaching sessions uh, regarding meditation, mm-hmm. right? So yes. tell them how they can find you. Um, so if you are interested in having a 30 minute session with me, it's completely free. Um, this particular session, just email me at living whole at Charlene And my name is spelled Charlene with two E's together. So C H A R L E E N Hess.com. And you can email me there and we will schedule a time. Wonderful. So you can also find me on Facebook. I am at Charlene Hess, your empowerment coach on Facebook. And I do have an Instagram, which is also Charlene Hess empowerment coach. So any way that you want to be able to reach me or contact me, you can. Wonderful. And is that, is that part of our free giveaway today? The the 30 minute, which is everybody should take advantage of that because it's going to be wonderful to have a communication call with you. Yes. That's a $60 value, completely free to have that 30 minute consultation or uh, it's not a consultation. It's actually going to be a 30 minute session with me that I can ha- take you through this process that I have been able, that I've discovered of how to ha- find a deeper intimate connection with yourself through meditation. And it's not, may not be what you think it is. So we'll yes. be covering more of that in the show as we go. Yeah. So Charlene, just before we go to break, we're going to go to break in about one minute, but before we go into break, tell us, uh, about meditation. What is it about meditation? And then take us to break. Okay. So the thing that I do want to touch on is there are so many different ways of meditation. Uh, Meditation has been being used for thousands of years. People use it for spiritual enlightenment. Um, It's been westernized and people... Um, in the in, in the West have used it for even in fitness practice. It, it's very big in yoga. It's been used to help lower your heart rate. It's been used as a health practice. So there's so many different ways of meditation. And the purpose of meditation is really when you look at the dictionary definition of it, it basically means, and I'll, I'll read it here, the Wikipedia says, mm-hmm. it's a practice where an individual focuses their mind on a particular object, thought, or activity to achieve mental clarity and an emotionally calm state. Meditation has been used to reduce stress, anxiety, depression, and pain. It can be done while sitting or repeating a mantra, closing the eyes in a quiet environment. Um, and that's that's like the Wikipedia definition of what is meditation. But as you s- go back and look at all the different ways that meditation has been used, it's wonderful because you start to realize that you can't do it wrong. So when you look at the definition, it's like if you take a moment to calm and to sit and to think deeply, you're meditating. So you can have walking meditation. I often meditate while I'm doing the dishes. You can sit quietly and do meditation as well. Um, You know, cross-legged, you know, your fingers touching. You can use mantras. But really, there is no wrong way to do meditation. And so what I'm going to talk about when we come back from break is a particular way of meditation that I have found that works really well for the purpose of going deeper inside to find yourself, to find a deeper connection to yourself, to find out all of those answers that you're looking for out there, how to use meditation as a way to go in and find it to yourself. So we're going to talk about that when we come back from break. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth. I'm talking with my co-host, Charlene Hess, and we're talking about meditation. One of the things that we were talking about before we went to break is Charlene was sharing about Wikipedia and what is written in Wikipedia about what meditation is. And so I just want to add this note. Someone was the authority in Wikipedia to write whatever that is. And so then when we go look up, uh, what does Google say? What does Wikipedia say about meditation? And then we read what it says. And then we're like, oh, okay. Um, That's what meditation is. But truly, in order to be your own authority, you have to discover for yourself Mm -hmm. what meditation is to you. And that's what we're really talking about today, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. 
So I think one of the biggest parts about becoming successful in meditation, once you define what meditation is for you, so that's an important piece, is what is what is it that you're looking for? Why are you going into meditation? Are you looking to lower your heart rate? Are you looking to decrease anxiety? Are you looking to try and find an answer to a decision that you're needing to make? Are you um, just trying to get some stillness in your mind? What is what is your point? What is it that you want to get out of meditation? And then the other really important piece is to develop the practice. And I would say that has probably been the hardest part for me is to make a dedicated practice of doing meditation. So regardless of what way you choose to meditate, giving yourself the time, taking on that form of self-care to set time aside for whatever you decide, whether it's every day, whether it's a couple times a week, whether it's once a week, whatever you decide that's going to work for you, put it in your calendar, make the time, make it, you know, like I did with myself is I made it a challenge because that's, um, that works well with me. As Cornelia was jesting earlier, it's like, oh, I should have just made it a challenge and then you would have done it a long time ago. <laughs> True. Because I, I was given the challenge of, you know, to meditate for an hour a day. And at the time that I was given that challenge, I hadn't meditated for 20 minutes successfully. And so, and I say successfully because I was uh, going by somebody else's definition. I was going by somebody else's authority of how I was supposed to meditate. Um, and I did it. I didn't do it right because I didn't get to the place that I thought that I was supposed to get to in doing meditation. And so, the first part about creating a meditation practice is realizing that it is a practice. When you do anything in your life where you are going to do something different than what you do in your everyday daily life, it's something that you have to put a lot of conscious effort into. You need to arrange your schedule. You need to make sure that you, whatever it is that you're deciding that you're taking on, whether you're taking on a new exercise program or you're going to take on, um, you know, eating healthier or, you know, whatever it is, make the time. So that's the first step is make time to stop the noise. And that, you know, that's the title of this show is stop the noise. We have so much noise in our daily life, constantly coming at us all the time, all the time, all the time. Media keeps us very distracted so that we're constantly looking out, you know, look at this, look at this. I think it's, it's, um, I don't remember how many years ago when they did the study, but it used to be the average attention span was, I think, 15 seconds, I want to say in 2008, maybe. Mm -hmm. Don't quote me on that. Mm -hmm. But um, the last study that they did in 2014, they discovered that the average attention span is six seconds long. So it's six seconds long that we basically can focus our attention on one thing before we have to quick click to another thing. And everything around us is geared to that. You know, look at Facebook, you know, even here, Facebook, we're doing this live segment on Facebook. There's been so many times that people will just go, oh, I've listened for, you know, a little bit, clicks, you know, scroll through, you know, we've got our phones and it's like scroll, 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 because our brains have just been programmed to consume at such a rapid rate that we really need to make an effort to stop the noise. Can I, can I, can I say down. something here um, to stop the noise? Because really what, what is all that stimuli doing? Cause this is another important piece. Mm -hmm. um, it keeps you distracted and it keeps yeah. feeding the addict, the Same. addict in you that is continuously looking for another thing to be stimulated by so that it can feel whole and complete. So mm -hmm. if you're distracted long enough, because if you were to use that time rather to sit in, and be in meditation or journaling or being out in nature or self-care or self-love or whatever, uh, then, um, you know, you could really tap into that mm -hmm. inner quiet, right? But it's Absolutely. the addict, keeping the addict fed, which is exactly what the matrix wants you to do. Consume this, consume this, consume this. And this has been part of the reason why we're in the mess that we're in and what we're undoing is to undo the consumerism and really become, again, caretakers, become nurturers. But we ha it has to start within. Absolutely. Absolutely. So making time, dedicating time to have a practice of meditation, decide how long you want to do it for. So maybe you start with 20 minutes. So spending 20 minutes to just be still, to unplug from any type of external stimuli. So maybe it's going for a walk in the woods, um, 
but not being on your phone, not listening to music, just having some time where you just are with yourself. And so that is a really great way to begin the journey of creating a time for meditation. So as you do this, and as you start to create a practice where you have committed to yourself, so let's say I'm going to use, for example, 20 minutes a day. So for 20 minutes a day, you set aside and you say, okay, for 20 minutes every day for the next two weeks, I'm going to dedicate time to try and meditate, to just be still and to be quiet with myself. So rather than looking out, I'm going to take a moment to either to look inside. And so in doing this practice, you start to create the time allotment and then you're able to advance from there. So the first step is find out how is it that you want to meditate? What is your definition of meditation? Is it doing yoga? Is it going for a walk? Is it um, just sitting still in silence? Find out what that definition is for you. Find out what works and how do you know it works? It feels good. <laughs> it doesn't feel heavy. It feels light. Go with what feels light is really important. And so you want to be able to feel rejuvenated after this time that you've spent. And so that's how you know you did it right. Don't worry about so much doing it the wrong way, just giving yourself that time. And so once you develop this practice of setting aside the time, you can then expand how much time that you're doing your meditations for. And so with the particular type of meditation that I have been using and the type of meditation that I'm teaching is it's about taking time to be with yourself and to hold space for yourself. And, uh, you know, Cornelia, you first are the, you're the, person who I think first introduced the idea of what does it mean to hold space. And I really love, um, you know, that, that whole concept of what does it mean to hold space? Yes, absolutely. What is it, what does it mean to hold yes, space? What does it mean to is, hold space? It, is to sit and be present with yourself, to sit and be present with yourself that whatever is up, whatever you're feeling Whatever is going, whatever is going on with you, whatever is up for you, whatever is up for the person that you're holding space for, whether that is yourself or the other person, you are the witness. You are uh, listening. You're listening. You're the observer. You're hearing. You're communicating in a way where you're just holding the space for you to be heard, for you to be mm -hmm. witnessed, for you to be um, nothing to fix, nothing to do, just hold space. Don't even right. give advice, especially not give advice. Just mm -hmm. listen to right. what the person is saying, because this is not about the other person. It is about you being able to listen to you, holding space for yourself. Right, right. And so when I first learned about how to hold space, when I would have women's circles and we would talk about what does it mean to be an active listener and how when you're holding space, because that's a term a lot of people don't know what that means. What does it mean you know, hold space. What does that mean? And what it is, is it's like giving somebody the opportunity, you create a container and somebody has the opportunity to just unload whatever it is that they're thinking, whatever it is that they're feeling. And the most important piece of this is you are listening for the sake of letting them speak, letting them unfold, letting whatever that's in there come out without judging it, without fixing it, without trying to uh, have an opinion about it because whatever it is that they're sharing is not about you. And so when you learn how to become an active listener and you learn how to hold space for other people, you open up a doorway for people to really unfold and open themselves up, which is absolutely the most amazing transformational thing that you can ever do for anybody is to just listen without judgment, without opinion, without advice, without a need to fix it, even in your own mind, don't fix it, just observe. Be the observer, hold space, give a nod, keep eye contact and know that, wow, this, and it feels really good to have somebody hold space for you. It's absolutely incredible. And so after I learned about what that means and I actively became an active listener and I be, learned how to hold space and hold space for others, I realized as I was starting to do my meditation that now I've learned how to hold space for me. And so we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I'm going to talk about how do you hold space for yourself? Yes. Thanks and so before we go listening. to meditation, I mean, before we go to meditation, ooh, before we go to break, uh, tell everybody again your free giveaway. Yeah. So my free giveaway is a free 30 minute coaching call, um, specifically on meditation. 
Um, if you are interested and you want to take advantage of that, just email me at livingwhole at charlenehess.com. That's two E's together. Or you can go to my Facebook page, which is Charlene Hess, Your Empowerment Coach. We're going to go to break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Heaven on Earth. And I'm with my co-host, Charlene Hess, and we're talking about holding space for yourself in meditation. Take us to it, Charlene. (laughs) Welcome back. So again, I just wanted to go over the free giveaway this week um, for the t- for today's show is a free 30-minute coaching call with me talking about meditation. And in that coaching call, I'm going to take you through a process of how to hold space for yourself in meditation. So we're assuming you've meditated for a little bit, you've allotted the time, you've created a practice to get still in your mind. And you're at the point now where you're ready to increase your time of how long you sit with yourself. So this particular type of meditation, I first learned um, taking uh, Kyle Cease's work. I'm doing his Evolving Out Loud program. And in there was when I, when I was given the, ta- the invitation to meditate for an hour a day. And when I first did that, um, I had so much resistance. It was incredible how crazy I was in my mind trying to sit there for an hour. Like I said, at the time when I first did this, I hadn't even had 20 minutes of of successful meditation down. So here I am, I'm sitting there, got my eyes closed and I'm just, I'm literally going crazy in my mind. I just want to do everything to not be sitting there still with myself. I found myself constantly reaching over for my phone because it's where I had my timer and I wanted to look at it. And I thought, no, I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to have my eyes closed. And it was really interesting to me as I was sitting there at all of the craziness that was going on in my mind. And for a moment I was sitting there and I was probably about 30 minutes in and I'm sitting there and my eyes are closed. And all of a sudden I had this like question that came up inside my brain, like a a part of myself separated from the chaos, which those of you that do meditate and are familiar with meditation, they call this the monkey mind, right? And so there I am sitting there, monkey mind going crazy. We're talking so circus was going on in there in my mind. And I'm just sitting there. And at this, I had this moment where I just was like, who is that anyway? Who is talking in my head? And it, you know, it's like, it seemed like a schizophrenic moment, right? Cause it's like, who's talking in my head. But really what that question was, was where are all of these thoughts coming from? I all of a sudden had this moment where I became the observer of all of my crazy thoughts. And I sat there for a little bit and I just sat there and I just noticed. And Kyle Cease talks about this in doing these different types of meditations when you're sitting there for one or sometimes two hours is to just observe. And so when you have a thought that comes up to just sit and look at it, don't judge it, become the observer and hold space for yourself. And oh my goodness, Cornelia, I am telling you what a huge breakthrough. After I stopped being in so much resistance, I mean, I was literally, I was squirming. I had my eyes closed. It was just like, oh, everything in me was just like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> and when I finally had that moment of going, who, whose voice is that that keeps saying, you know, shouldn't you be doing something else? This is a complete waste of time. And so I started to observe and I thought, oh, curious. So there's this one particular voice that is just really loud that keeps saying, you should be busy. You should be doing something else. You should be, uh, don't you have things that you need to do? What about all your to-do list today? Just completely distracting me. And I just observed and I thought, hmm, curious. And I didn't attach to it. I didn't judge it. I just sat and I observed. And it was really interesting because when I did that, it went away. As soon as I gave it the attention it was looking for, it went away. And I thought, well, isn't that interesting? And then all of these other voices started to come into my head, all of these other thoughts, right? And so they're basically, they're just thoughts. They're because we as humans, we have multiple thoughts at a time. Hence, monkey mind, right? So you can sit there and be doing one thing and have this thought, oh, what am I going to make for dinner? And I wonder what my friend meant when they said that one thing. And 
you know, I've noticed that my son hasn't called me yet today. And what time is it? And, oh, at work, there was that one email I was supposed to send. And all of this is happening simultaneously while you're doing, you know, maybe the dishes or while you're, you know, at work. So all of these thoughts are happening in our head all the time. And so what I have discovered is how to take my meditation time when that comes up of how to go in and listen and to kind of sort that out, right? To sort out the monkey mind. And the way that I've found that works really well was one of the times I was sitting in my um, meditation and I was having this moment. I all of a sudden realized that I became the observer or I sometimes call her the moderator. And I said, all right, all right, all right, listen, who all is here anyway? And it was like, I took attendance <laughs> and I felt like I was in a kindergarten classroom, right? And like everybody wants to talk at once and nobody is raising their hand and it's just totally chaotic and noisy. And I felt like I became the kindergartner teacher and I was like, all right, all right. I hear everybody settle down. Everyone's going to have a chance to talk. Let's first just take attendance and, and who's here. And it was really interesting that when I did that, I was able to like, identify the monkeys, right? So instead of the monkeys all running around crazy speaking at once, it was like I became this observer, this moderator that I said, okay, who is here? And it was interesting because I was able to identify like, okay, taskmaster is loud center up front present, right? And then there was the um, really excited giddy part of me who has tons and tons of ideas, like ideas flowing all the time of, oh, oh, we could do this and then we could do this and we could do this. And she's really excited, but she's very, you know, chitter chattery. She likes to talk a lot. And so as I was going through and then there was, you know, the judge, the judge was in there going, you know, I think you're doing this all wrong and you should really, you know, you should be doing it a different way. <laughs> And so as I went through and did that, and then I was like, I just sat and I listened and I just waited and I was like, well, I want to hear what heart has to say. Like, what about my heart? I want to go in and feel my heart. And it was like, she's this little quiet little girl that's way back in the corner and she doesn't speak very often and she doesn't speak much, especially if there's a lot of other loud voices going on. And so it was like, oh, isn't that curious? And so I just observed and I sat and I listened and I noticed how who's talking the loudest. I noticed who doesn't talk very much. And I've now taken that practice into my meditation where immediately when I go into meditation, I go, all right, let's take attendance. Who's here? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> who's here? Who's, who's the loudest? You say what you got to say. I'm listening. I'm hearing you. I'm holding space. I'm not judging. I'm not going to go down the rabbit trail of whatever argument you've got for me. I'm just going to sit and listen. And that is the beginning process of how I hold space is I'm not so much worried about trying to control the monkey mind. I want to get to know the monkeys. And that is the most beautiful, brilliant, whole new uh, piece that you're bringing to meditation because it's something that's happened for all of us. We've all had to, you know, um, quiet the monkey mind and keep focusing again, the energy on the third eye and breathing and um, going back to our object, but mm -hmm. nobody's really put it that way, which now is just such a fun way to, um, to get the other voices in, in our schizophrenic mind uh, <laughs> acknowledged, right? Because really, that's really what it's all about. It's about everything wants to be heard. Yeah. Everything wants to be witnessed. Everything wants to be acknowledged because there's so many different parts of ourselves. And like you said, the heart that didn't, um, that had a very small, timid voice because the other ones are talking way too loud and the other ones are the ones that you've listened to mostly and acted upon what they're saying. Well, you shouldn't be doing it this way. You should be doing it this way. Or I got to go. This isn't, this, this is a complete waste of time. I got to get busy. I got to get doing, I got to be more of a human doing rather than a human being, which is part of the reason why meditation is so powerful because it really helps you to get calm, to get centered and to really get quiet so you can be more receptive, be more intuitive and be more in your feminine. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's just such a great experience to know that nobody has to leave. There is of, of all the voices of all the parts of me that show up, even the, the bitchy one, even the taskmaster, even the judge who is always saying you're doing it wrong. She doesn't have to leave. 
I'm not trying to get rid of any of these parts. I'm accepting and loving all of them. They all are invited. Everybody is welcome because what I'm holding space, right? Just like I do for my friends, just like I do for my clients. When I'm holding space, there is no judgment. And I'm giving myself that very same gift Absolutely. is that whatever thoughts that come up in my head is 100% welcome. Absolutely. And so I can choose to go down the rabbit trail of whatever thought that's screaming the loudest at me. If it's, that's where it needs to go. If that's where my meditation is going to be that day is because there's a part of me that's just having a fit and just needs to be heard. Okay. Well, you're going to get the floor today. Let's look at that. But I always take attendance. That's the biggest, most important thing for me when I'm going through and doing this type of meditation, because the point of meditation for me and the point of what I'm doing and what I'm teaching in the book that I'm writing in this seven step process that I'm sharing with you over these next several weeks or the next several months on each week. And we're covering today, we're covering the first two chapters of the book is stop the noise and get to know the monkeys. <laughs> and that's really what it's about. And so Taking the time to do this, holding space for yourself is an incredible gift that you can give yourself. And I'm telling you, when you start doing that, unbelievable, the changes that will happen in your life. And so we're going to go on break. And when we come back, I'm going to talk to you about what is that next step of getting to know the monkeys. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm with my co-host, Charlene Hess, and we're talking about the monkeys. <laughs> we're talking about the monkeys. <laughs> For those of you that are just listening in, we are talking about when you're in meditation, um, you often hear people will tell you about how to control the monkey mind. And I'm offering a different idea of rather than controlling the monkey mind, monkeys. And so the way that you do that Wait is a minute, when... hold on a minute, hold up, because you just did something with your computer. You just tapped something. And when you tapped something, you were speaking and we didn't hear it. So say it again. Okay. <laughs> we're talking about controlling the monkey mind. And what I'm offering is instead of controlling the monkey mind, get to know the monkeys. And so in that meditation, the way that you do that is by learning to hold space for yourself. And so as you are in that process of sitting, you've developed the practice of setting time aside to stop the noise. You've committed to doing 20 to 30 minutes, whatever you know that you can sustainably do a day. Then you sit and you get still with yourself and you just notice. That's it. You just notice. So whatever thought that comes up, you just go, hmm, interesting. And just wait and see what other thoughts come up. And as you do that and you've developed the practice of seeing what all the other thoughts are that are coming up, you then start to identify, okay, who, who are all of these monkeys? Or who are all of these voices? What part of me keeps showing up? What part of me always seems to show up first and the loudest? What part of me is the really quiet one in the corner who never really gets to talk? And so as you do this, so this is the process that I'm taking you through. So as you're going through each one of these steps and you're now in the place of where, okay, let's get to know the monkeys. This is where the magic happens. So now that you're in this place, and I really recommend minimum 30 minutes if you're going to do this practice to be able to start to identify what's going up. It takes me 15 minutes just to settle down. It takes me 15 minutes to get, you know, the little kids in the classroom to, you know, stop running around and be able to take their seats and tell me who's, you know, so that I can just see who's there. So for me, 20 minutes isn't even close to being enough time. 30 minutes isn't enough for me anymore. I need a full hour if I'm going to really go inside and see what it is that my heart is trying to say. Oh. And so what I'm doing personally with this is as I'm getting to know the monkeys, and this is going to take us through a whole nother segment that I'm going to get to later in the book and later in the shows is when you start to identify where did these thoughts come from? 
So I'll just touch on it briefly right now. So for instance, the loudest monkey in my mind, the loudest voice of mine is the task master. So she is the first to speak. She's the one who tries to take over my job as the observer because she's going to make sure everybody's in line and doing what they're supposed to do. She shows up all the time, loud front center stage. And it's, she's really annoying actually. Um, and I've tried, <laughs> I've tried a lot of times to just be like, ah, can you just go away? And that just makes her really mad. <laughs> it's funny. I'm talking it like, you know, I'm talking like this is this separate person, but it, it's me. It's a part of me. Um, it's a part of me that my kids can't stand <laughs> and it's the part of me that shows up. And so as I have learned to just love her and let her be there and go, okay, I hear you. I'm going to get all those things done on the list, but right now. I really want to connect with the other parts of me. And so as I, the way that I was able to come to that place was I came to the point to where I was able to identify where did that voice come from? And this is where we go into the work of discovering what your limiting beliefs are, to discover what your story is. What's the story running in the background that you're not even conscious of? And that taskmaster is my father. It is so my dad, he was such a um, taskmaster, just completely. His saying was, you know, look busy. He'd come home from, you know, his work or whatever he was doing. And if the kids looked like they were having fun, everybody had to instantly get to work, pick up a broom, pick up a washcloth, get the house being cleaned, get busy. And if you looked like you were sitting down and relaxing, oh, no, that was not allowed. And so that's this part of me that has just been ingrained in me. And it's not him anymore. It's me. I'm the one that took it on. And so it is a very real part of me. I'm the one, I adopted it. I made it part of who I am. And so I don't need to throw it away, but I have discovered a way to separate my father from it. And so when I have done that, and again, that's a whole separate body of work that I can work with people and coach them on is when you discover these voices and the loud ones and you start to say, well, whose voice is that anyway? Or where did that even come from? How to take some of that power away so that the part that remains is your part, the part that you want to have. Because I need a taskmaster because they're the other part of me, which is the giddy little girl who just has tons of ideas and is super playful and just wants to jump and run and play. She would never get anything done. So I need that taskmaster part of me just as much as I need the idea part of me, just as much as I need the loving heart part of me that holds space. Everybody needs, it's, everybody is welcome. Every, every part of you serves a purpose. And so the magic really happens when you are able to go down to that place where the loud parts are taking a pause and the quieter parts start to speak. That is is where the magic happens. When you, for me, the quietest part for me is my heart. And so when my heart has an opportunity to speak, it is so amazing what happens. Just the physical sensation that I get in my body when I'm able for all of the other parts of me to be seen, to be heard, to be witnessed, and then quieted down. And then this other part of me shows up and that's where the that's where the juicy stuff is. And we're going to talk about that more on the next show that we're going to do on the third Friday of um, it's going to be in April. I'll be doing the show in April. I don't remember the date of that third Friday in April, but I'm going to talk more about that piece, about what happens when you start to cultivate this relationship with the quietest part of yourself. And when you start clearing off the stage because they're going to take center stage now. And your life starts to shift and change when you start acting from this deeper internal part of yourself, the part of you that you've kept hidden for so long. It's absolutely beautiful. You know, the visual that I get when you're talking is as the heart is emerging and the heart is um, coming forth front and center, all the other people in the room, they're just like taking a step back and they're taking a step back and they're taking yes. a step back in the room. They're taking a step back. And now the heart is, oh, that just gives me the chills. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it just gives it's me the so chills. beautiful. It's awesome. It's awesome it's, that you it's have transformational. To beautiful that this is working like this for you. It's wonderful. Yes. 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 Yeah. And um, so, so 
how do people get in contact with you now? And okay. Facebook. So, yep. So Facebook, find me, Charlene Hess, your empowerment coach. You can email me if you want to have a free session, just in the subject title, put um, my free coaching call and you will get a free 30 minute coaching call with me at living whole at charlenehess.com. And as we're getting ready to wrap up, I just want to offer a challenge to all of you. All of you that are listening, whether you're listening today or you're listening to the playback, I'm going to challenge you to 30 minutes a day for 30 days, Full. 30 minutes a day meditation and see what happens. Learn what, get to know the monkeys, observe the monkey mind and just see what happens. If you were to spend 30 minutes a day, every day, so if it takes you a couple of days to just get started, if it takes you a couple of days to just carve out the time, great. Don't worry about doing it wrong, but just make the dedicated time to spend 30 minutes a day for 30 days. That's my challenge that I'm giving to all of you. And I can't wait to hear what happens. Me too. Thank you so much for giving that challenge and for educating us today about another way that we can experience meditation in a, in a, in a totally new way. And um, it sounds so fun and exciting to get to know the monkeys. Yes. And um, <laughs> thanks for the challenge. And the other thing I want to ask you, if you're not busy next week, I would love to see if you would like to host me on the show next week. Yes, let's talk about that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's been a great show and uh, it's, it's amazing how quick time goes by. People can find you at charlenehess.com. They can go to your Facebook at Charlene Hess, your empowerment coach. Charlene Hess, your empowerment coach. And if you want to work with me, corneliastephanie.com under Evolve. And there we go. Thank you so much for listening and tuning in, tuning into the Living Your Heaven on Earth radio show. We'll see you next time. Namaste.